everybody, and welcome to Zohar class number 34. I am your host, as always, Rabbi David Katz. We are back after a little layoff. Sometimes we get laid off of our jobs, which in this case, it's teaching Taira, because the holidays come, and I can't change that. So hopefully you had a nice Passover, and preparation going into Passover. I know we missed Zohar class a little bit because we were doing some gear classes. And in all honesty, we're going to miss Zohar class again, and for a good reason this week, even though it's technically Zohar number 34. Uh, just a little status update. I'm getting ready to hit the road finally. Yay, Cape Town. And the redesign has taken a little longer than expected. What well, not a surprise, I know that. But uh, hopefully we'll have meetings in Cape Town with the builders. And the redesign will be handed off down there. And by the time I come back, hopefully we'll have the new look to the site. We know what we want. There's, it's not that there's been no progress. We know what we want. It's a matter of how do we... Uh, express the content on the homepage so that people that don't know what we're doing have an idea of what we're doing. And so, again, functionality, the site's perfect. We're just working on how to make it approachable for new people, and it takes a little bit of time, and I do apologize for that. So in this week's class, it's a new mimer, Mimer Kate's Kolbasar, the mimer of the end of all flesh. And it would be Mishnah number 75, I and He. And if I was doing a regular Zohar class, I would have read, translated, and guessed. And I would have explained it a little bit. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. As I was looking over my notes from last time, there's a concept that has bothered me for a very, very long time. Noah was short or lacking a derivative of the word amuna called amana. And as I was preparing today, I thought, you know what? Let, let's solve this riddle. We're doing the whole Noah thing. And this Zohar class is all about solving Noah, right? One or two. I can't read one or two from here, but you got it. What was the ark? Who was Naich? What was the flood? What was the water? What was the draft? And we've really, well, we've done 74 Mishnais. I would say we, we're holding in a very solid ground of who was Noah? What did he mean? What did he stand for? I mean, we got it pretty good. And today, hopefully, we'll go even further in that direction. So I found the source of this statement. Now, you guys know what, what Roshay Tavis are, correct? The initial letters of words. And there's an expression, as I've said three times now. Noyich mechusser amonahaya. Noah was lacking a mana. And when you take the nun of Noyach, the mem of Mechusser, the aleph of Amana, and the he of Haya, spells the word Amana. How cool is that? I think it's pretty cool. And the source of this is Bereshis Midrash Rabbah 32.7. Amma Rabbi Yechanan, Noyech Mechusser Amonahaya, Ilule Shiagiu Amayim, Ad Karsulav, Lo Nichnas Lateva. He was Chosser Amona because when the water reached up to his knees, he still did not enter the ark. Let's call it an ark for lack of whatever. And we look in the commentary, the Eitz Yosef. He did not come to the Teva. 
until after began the waters of the Mabu, until the water came up to his knees. And this was after he burdened himself in the Teva for many years. In any case, he doubted the matter that God, he, he thought that God would take pity on the world, so there's no reason to come to the ark. Because of that, he was considered Mechusar Amana. God does not go back on his word except through Chuvat Fila and Schus. Now's where it gets interesting, Sean Canaan. Jacques Cutsy, Ross Bearded. We just read the source. Rashi quotes this, if you look in your Helmosh, in Genesis 7 7. If you have a Helmosh with Rashi, look up right now Genesis 7 7. And you will see Rashi, your friend, quote this Midrash. This is the source. And this is why we are forced all the time to say that Noyach was not a tzaddik like Avraham. Somehow Noyach was lacking. Noyach was subpar. This is the source. Or the motivation or drive that brings us to say Noyach, blah, 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 problematic, blah, blah, blah. And as we ended last time on like a, a season-ending cliffhanger, I thought, you know what? Let's solve this Mechusar Amana deal once and for all. So I look it up, and we go to Eitz Yosef, and it's pretty straightforward. But how many of you caught what I caught? God does not go back against his word except through tshuva, tefillah, and schus. That is called knowing the sugya. This is the beauty of Torah 101. If there's one thing I love in this world, it's this. All of my isms are coming out today. Rule number one, love the book. Get off your tuchus and look it up, Jacques. Yeah, it means you got to get up and get the Midrash Rabbah. And what if you don't have a Midrash Rabbah in your home? And you're a rabbi teaching Torah. Then my question is, why don't you have a Midrash Rabbah in your home? You kind of have to have the Midrash Rabbah in your home. Now, is it required? I don't know if I'd call it required. But when Rashi is quoting for you Midrash Rabbah 32.6, you can A, rely on Rabbi Google, assuming you're going to look up Rabbi Google. B, are you going to look it up at all? See, if you're at least willing to look it up, don't you at least have to have it in your home to look it up? And chances are online, you're not going to get the commentary to really properly look it up. And at 9 o'clock at night, I'm not running to the base vendors across town. Having a library, especially as a rabbi, goes along with rule number one, love the book. Rule number two is use the book, look it up. So then you look it up, and again, it's not a literal novel. There's, there's columns and margins and footnotes, codification, which is 
learning and knowing how to learn. And then your friends in Facebook Landia will say, I know how to learn. I can read and translate. Well, we call this class Retranslate Guess. And not by accident. Where you go beyond Read, Translate, Guess is the end of the Eight Yosef commentary. And I, I have a midrash with more expansive commentaries, should I need it. But the ATOS of commentary is sufficient. And the very industrious student would Google and Wikipedia and find out who was the ATOS. In fact, maybe we can find out here. I, mean, I already know that they're common commentaries, but who they were would require a little bit of background, which I enjoy doing. I didn't do it now, or before, but it's always nice to know. It's gonna, it says it here in the opening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated, but I would really like to know more about this commentary. Eitz Yosef, Anaf Yosef, and Yad Yosef. Can someone remind me after class? I mean, I'm seeing it, but I don't want to learn this now on the spot. Can somebody remind me as soon as class is over to look up exactly who the Eitz Yosef is? And why he's standard in kind of like a Rashi type rule in the Midrash Rabbah? Because I want to know. Now, when you go to the H. Yosef, and he ends his commentary on this part by saying that Noyak was considered lacking a mana because God does not go against his word except through Chuvat Fil and Schus. That's where learning jumps another level. And that is the beauty of Torah. It's where the language of Torah becomes utterly fantastically beautiful. And it's when everything becomes the sugya. Everything becomes cut and paste from the proper sugya. The language of tshuva, tefillah, and schus. How many of you recognize that language? Jacques Carsi? I'll give you a hint. When we say that a person can change their mazel, you can change your mazel from tshuva, tefillah, and schus. Therefore, what was the challenge of Noah? It's called the mazel sukkah. And you cannot possibly know this unless you know the Mazel Sugya. And when you read the Eight Yosef, he knew the Mazel Sugya. And he copied and pasted from the Mazel Sugya. So did the Eight Yosef write that? No. Copied and pasted because he knows. Noyach Bechusar Amana is a Mazel Sugya Indian. Put it together, copy and paste it. Becomes commentary Eitz Yosef. What do you guys think about that? And again, if you are going to rely on retranslate guess, you would have read it, Tshuva, Tefillah and schus, repentance, prayer, 
and merit. But is it really translatable? No. Because translation comes from words. You did not read words on a piece of paper. You read copy and paste. Which means it was a copy-paste representation of a greater corpus of writings called the Mazel Sugya. Which by definition, A, cannot be encapsulated in words. B, you don't have the time to translate it all. So we call it Tshuva, Tfila, and Schus in shorthand copy and paste. So now we can look at Noach in a totally different light. Noah was going around telling everyone, hey guys, I built a teva, and we'll, we'll call it a boat. Hurry up, repent. The floodwaters are coming. Whatever may mabel are, may ha mabel, waters the flood. And everyone says, no, yeah, take a hike. He says, no, but in seven days, Maya Mabel's coming, coming, hurry, do tshuva. They say, no, yeah, take a hike. And then the Maya Mabel come. And from the fear of the Maya Mabel, no, yeah, says, you know what? I guess it's time to enter the ark. The teva. And because it, he only entered the Teva at that point, he is considered Machusara Manahaya. Now's where it gets super duper interesting. Noyach is saying, repent. Noyach is a prophet. And what did we learn in the Daniel class? Daniel understood Mazel because he was not a prophet. He had prophecy, but not acting as a sent prophet. Therefore, he could see the Mazel, and the other people, they could not see the Mazel. Their Mazel saw for them. Chagai, Zechariah, and Malachi. God is saying to Noach, in Mazel is the Kate's Kulbasar, the end of all flesh. I really don't care what that looks like in 3D. In 4D, it's called Kate's Kulbasar, the end of all flesh. Now, it doesn't matter in 3D because 3D makes it real. Like the Matrix. If I told all of you that I know where you live and I'm coming with a hatchet, and I really meant it, I sent you death threats in the mail, it's the end of you and your family, would you be afraid? Type one, yes. Yes. Therefore, you would have fear. Even if I was relating a 4D concept that had nothing like it sounded in 3D, you would still have the fear of it. This is what Kate's Kulbasar is. It's Kate's Kulbasar in 4D, which creates and energy in the world, interpreting it literally, remember, because they don't believe in Sveidinim, higher understanding. So they say, oh no, the end of all flesh. And fear erupts in the world. And Noah's going around saying, no, 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 repent, repent, repent. And God says, no, it's in Mazel. It has to happen. And Noyach realizes as the fear of the main model sets in, 
He enters the Teva. But the Eitz Yosef says, wait a minute. Noyach thought God would just say, hey, you know, I'm going to take pity on the world. We learn in Mazel class, God doesn't make a miracle outside the creation Because you said so. But what does Ezekiel say? There's a sugia. When Avraham was told by God, the greater tzaddik in this case, Avraham, you are above mazel. Ain mazel Yisrael. That's why Avraham was greater. To Avraham was given the secret of how to change Mazel. Nayak did not attempt to change Mazel. It had not been revealed. He thought, encourage everyone to do tshuva. And for that, he was Bechusar Amana. He didn't have a Mazel relationship with God like Daniel did as opposed to the other prophets. What A.T. Yosef is saying is that Nayak's job would have been a, change the mazel. B, teach them to change the mazel. And how do we know that's the pshat of the Eitz Yosef? He copied and pasted from the mazel sugya. By knowing the mazel sugya, you can recognize the sugya. All of rabbinic writing, all of it, is not ever been written. And I said that ungrammatically incur grammatically incorrect on purpose nothing was ever written everything has an indigenous home to a sugya so we have a commentator here blah 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 is another way of saying copy paste copy paste copy paste here we have another commentator blah 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 is another way of saying copy paste copy paste Nothing is written uniquely. It is cobbled, copied, and pasted. And only through the principles of look it up, love the book, can you locate the sugya. But you must be willing to look it up or you'll never get the sugya. And you must become sensitive to all language by realizing they're not words and they're not retrans like guests. They are part of a sugya. And then, when you understand the sukya, you can understand the whole thing. Noyak struggled with mazel. Why did it take me so long to figure that out? I never looked it up, and I never saw it was the mazel sukya. Therefore, there was a big iron lock over Noyak Mechusra Manahaya. And you'll never get it. You'll never read Translate and Guess. Until you realize all the rabbis that talk about it are all quoting to you a sugya that you didn't even recognize and was there the whole time. So then why did Noyak build an ark, a literal boat? Because when God changes mazel, it's called redemption. At Pesach, God passed over and he told the Jews, the Israelites, future gear, wherever they were, stay in your home. And that's how you'll be protected for the fear that comes from the change of Mazel. And on Sukkot, we stay in our Sukkot to be protected from the fear of the change of Mazel. And in the end of days, which is what this mimer is about when we get to it next week, the, all of the prophets speak about the fear of the end of days. Because the redemption and change of mazel, it could be fire, it could be a flood, a war, it doesn't matter. It's the fear of it, because it's in 4D and in mazel. It doesn't matter if there's an actual war. By telling you there's a war, there's a fear. It doesn't matter if there was a literal flood. By telling you there was a flood in 4D mazel, you assume the fear. And so what does God tell Noah? Build an ark. If the fear in the mazel is floodwaters in 4D, then take refuge in an ark. 
And it doesn't matter because nobody in the generation did it anyways. The fact that Noyev took it literal doesn't matter. Just like you can ask, why do we sit in huts on Sukkot? Because that's what God ordained. Why on Passover do we stay in our house? Because that's what God ordained how to weather the, the, the fear. In Noah's time, it was a boat. In times of redemption, the fear in the mazel comes down and God says, do X to weather this storm. The Maral says, at the end of days, we will take refuge in truth and in kindness. So you can say, build vessels of truth and kindness. You can take it literally, allegorically. Allegorically, words of Torah, literally, truth and kindness will get you through the end of days. But the deeper message is that we already knew from the time of the destruction of the temple there would be an end of days war. Which is redemption. Which means a constant state of fear. Which means the mazel is constantly in Gogol Magog. And Noyev tells us the secret. Either there will be a Mashiach who will, unlike Noyev, and like Abraham, change the mazel of the world from a state of fear to peace. Or it will be a teacher of how to change the mazel. That if you want to be redeemed, you learn how to change your mazel. Full stop. Noyach didn't get the mazel sugya. He thought, literally, repent, davin, merit. And he was the chusramana. Abraham, I mean, it sounds obvious to us now, but that was the difference between the revelation of Noyach and Abraham. Abraham was revealed the mazel sugya. He was a more, it was a more technologically advanced spirituality that came down. Now it makes sense. So therefore, Noyach literally even, you could say, went to the ark. And that's, is it just like Sukkot, just like Passover. And when he entered... He was not affected any longer by the fear of the change of the mazel. And we said earlier on that the floodwaters were mazel. And that's the question is, what is the meha mabel? And the answer is, A, it's a mazel. B, it doesn't matter. C, what matters is in 3D becomes the fear. So what did it look like in those times? A universal fear. Much like probably with Trump today, people are afraid. But it's not Trump, it's the mazel. And we could be like Noyich and, and hope that God gives us a, a new mitzvah. Build an ark, build a sukkah to escape the fear until the fear passes. Or we learn from Noyich and the answer is change the mazel. And it looks to me that the time of the redemption, Kate's Yamin, which we get that expression from Daniel, by the way, we will have a universal change of mazel. Either up above the mazel will change, or down here, as Noah warned the world, rather than warning them, they will learn to change their mazel. To me, the Noyach Sugi is solved. We understand Mehamabu, we understand the Teva, we understand Noyach, we understand Sadik, and the missing piece, as usual, is the Mazel Sugi. As I always say, if I see anything in, in Torah more concealed and all over the place than Ger, is the Mazel Sugi. It's everywhere. And by the Loving the book and looking it up, as I was shocked to see the Mazel Sugya, I wasn't shocked that that's the missing piece to the Noyak story. So now we can go on next week 
And we'll start with Mission of 75, retranslate guess. But we understand now that we're looking for the mazel moments in the Noah story. Thank you for listening. I hope you had a great Pesach. Have a great Omer. And by the time we get to Shavuos, I will have been re- returned from Cape Town, hopefully with good news. But the website redesign and a successful trip in Cape Town, which I'm long overdue. And that's all I have for you. So have a great week. Glad to be back. Tomorrow, we should look forward to actually a Mazel class. And on Thursday, tour of Daniel, God willing. Um, yes, that's all I have for you. See you then.